What's your life goal? And have you achieved it? Yeah, I married you. Aw, gross. You really need to go out there and make sure the whole world hates you. My butthole is all over the internet. A fine wine. She keeps me in the basement and pulls me out when she needs me. If I drink Sambuca, he's getting it. I bought a case. You can tell a lot about a person by the way their tits, pussy, or dick looks. You come near my cheeks and it's not going to be a good day for you, homie. <laughs> this is going to be special. Welcome to the Two Onions Podcast with Danny Daniels and Vic. What's up, guys? I'm Dini Daniels, and next to me is my husband, Vic. And from the other side of the world, one of my best friends on the planet, I finally got her on the podcast. <laughs> Former porn star, Samantha Bentley. I just know her as Samantha. Is here. Hi, everyone. You're here. You're locked I'm down, so that's the only way I got you. <laughs> I know. I'm locked down, but I'm actually sitting at the beach right now. So. <laughs> like, well, that's a good place to be. Yeah, that's a lockdown. That's where I want to be locked down. <laughs> right? We moved out of London just before lockdown, and we couldn't have picked a better time to go. And now I'm like, hey, sun setting on the beach, whatever. Yeah, we kind of we kinda, we kind of followed your lead. We're 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 locking down on the beach ourselves too. We're like the hell with this I'm shit. Just a, a trendsetter, I can't help it. Yeah, I really think like you're the reason why we like ran away from New York is because we saw you. We're like. Oh, that looks we cool. never, we, I said to, to Tony, my other half, for those that don't know, I was like, I cannot believe it. They've left New York. And he was like, no, they haven't. They're on holiday. And I was like, no, they've, they've gone. They've left. I'm very shiny. I'm going to move this way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, um, it started as fleeing and then we just kind of like fell in love with it. And so now we're just kind of. Kind of like you. You're like. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. We, we did kind of. We did kind of follow your lead because I know your love of London is my my love in New York, and yeah. then we're like, hmm. <laughs> well, we could, I well, Tony fell in love with this place before I did, and I couldn't believe it. I was like so shocked when he said he didn't want to go back to London, and I was just like, wait, what? And at that point, I was like, I want to go back. I'm <laughs> done. Like, I don't want to live here. But but now I think after doing the summer here and lockdown here, we're pretty sold. And then. When I'm sitting on the beach at like 4 p.m. in November and it's like sunny, people are actually swimming in the sea and it's like 11 degrees. I don't know what that is with the, with the different. Oh, I'm so bad at that. It's like 30 plus yeah. six divided. No, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's like, yeah, 11 degrees is like 50 something. Yeah. So that's pretty cold. Yeah, it's cold. It's really cold. I mean, I, I was wearing a jacket. I'm not anymore because I'm hardcore. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm British. We, we we live for the cold. Yeah. <laughs> Stiff up a lip and all. Yeah. It is weird like that you're by a beach. Like I know that the I know it's an island but like I'm like, "Oh yeah, you guys have beaches?" Like I always think I know what well, that's the, no one thinks of England as like a beach place. You don't go here for a beach holiday. I mean, you don't go here for a beach holiday. They're not beach beaches, are they? They're English beaches. They're rubbish, but it's still a beach. <laughs> it's a nice. It's the same thing with New York City. Like everybody thinks of New York City, but it's a damn island, and it's on the Atlantic Ocean, and there's yeah. Coney Island, oh, yeah. but you never think of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've got beaches there as well. It is weird because no, and then people are like, "You moved to the beach. What country did you move to?" And I'm like, "No, here, here in England, <laughs> English beach. English. I'm on a holiday all year round." <laughs> So for those of you listening that don't know, Samantha and I have been friends for 10 years, more? It's come, I'd say it's coming up to 11. Yeah. But we literally entered the industry the same week. Yeah. <laughs> I think the same week and signed to the same agency, yep. to OC. And we like geeked out on each other on Tumblr. On, on Twitter. I it was when Twitter. Twitter okay, well, then maybe you don't know that I actually obsessed over you over Tumblr. Are you serious? <gasps> that makes me so happy because so basically, Bree Daniels um, retweeted you, and I was like, "Who is this girl?" And then I saw that you, that we were both signing to OC Modeling at the time, and I was like, "Okay, she's my new best friend." <laughs> she also didn't know I manifested it. Um, Tony's always like, "I wish you manifested things that were like." useful like money but i just manifest who i want to be best friends with <laughs> i'm like you will be my friend and then it happens and i'm like see i'm really good at this and he's like cool manifest like a million pounds now um but yeah so then we we like didn't we we talked online for a year i think before we met 
Yeah. And then we finally met. It was it was like almost like one of those blind date relationships where like you've been <laughs> so weird. And then you meet for the first time, you're like, hi. I think we spoke like two words. <laughs> it was no, we we're shooting in that like warehouse in LA. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that that like scene where we had the uniforms on. Yeah. It's just, oh, uniforms. We always, you and I always get stuck in like the shittiest situations together. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we. But then it, we, the track record of shitty situations, shitty boyfriends prior to the ones that we've decided to marry, and <laughs> like basically made our friendship based on the fact that we hated porn, <laughs> that we hated most other people we were in horrible relationships and we like and then it was like a back and forth do you remember i'd be happy you'd be sad yeah. and then you'd be sad i'd be happy <laughs> so when i was happy for you i'd be going through like a shit breakup and when you were happy for me you'd be going through a shit breakup so there was never that time when we were both happy until we met vic and tony and then i was like what's gonna fuck up here because yes. <laughs> we both like waited because you met tony first and then I had one more yes. shitty breakup. And so you were like yes. waiting. You're like, when is he going to suck? <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the fall. <laughs> but then that, that, then like, yeah. And then we both, but do you know what I think it is? It's stuff. We, we kind of stepped not like away from the industry, but we stopped like shooting so much mm -hmm. when we met Vic and Tony. So it was like a, you know, when you're in the throes of the industry and a relationship is, it's shit. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like, tough. You have it I feel like you had it a lot worse than I did. Like you always I feel like I don't know if this is like an overseas thing, but it's like almost like the better performer overseas, the worse they scenes they get. It's like, oh you can handle this, so you can Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the thing is as well it's like I put myself out there and I was like I won't say I, I don't I don't say stop I don't say no and then that came like my thing and they were like well with Samantha she's like she'll let you beat the shit out of her yeah, <laughs> yeah. stop and no are two important words yeah. in porn just no, in case you never, it, was, it was so funny yeah so guys just so you know there is consent but it's kind of like I push the boundaries of consent <laughs> i feel like when you got fisted and lifted off the ground the rocco scene <laughs> but then, you know what right okay if you want to talk about ways to scare away your future husband when we first met i was like hey do you want to see one of my scenes and that was the scene i picked to show him i was oh, like here's no. me and rocco oh, and no. like i don't know like you know you kind of want to write your own demise and yeah. i was like this guy is too good to be true he's too good for me he's too nice how can i really test him to to see if he'll run yeah and that was a winner no like, oh, no he was like literally like to this day he's like i cannot believe you did that and that was like the second time we ever met <laughs> but he was like Christ. if you did it to me now i would leave but he was just like then i didn't because neither of us really wanted to be in a relationship so it was like okay this girl's mental okay but but she's kind of fun so <laughs> he said like in the beginning that what kept him hanging on was what is she gonna do next like she's <laughs> so it was like she is so mental <laughs> like what's what's next did he know you did porn when you guys met yeah, so we met because I'm, I've got really bad light. Is it okay? I don't okay. know. Um, so we met because I needed a date for what is like the UK Porn Awards, which is nothing like ABN. They're like very small. But um, my I, I wasn't with my ex anymore and I kind of wanted to show up with someone hot and cool. And my friend at the time was dating his drummer. And she was like, yeah, Tony from Mode Step is single. And I was like, cool, show me a picture. And she sent me a picture of him. And I was like, yeah, I'll have that one. Um, so, <laughs> so we kind of exchanged numbers and we texted for a bit, but neither of us particularly wanted to be in a relationship. We were both fresh out of horrible relationships. Wow, this sounds familiar. Yeah, it sounds super familiar. Sounds yeah. very familiar. But, but isn't that always the way? Like, it's yeah. when you don't want it is when you meet the person that you're supposed to be with. Because... That way, I feel like it's when you have expectations when you first meet someone, you fuck it up. Yeah. 
Like if I'd walked into that room and be like, that's the dude I'm going to marry, I would have fucked it up. Yeah. But I walked into it and I was like, I don't really even want to go on this date. <laughs> And you're also I'm like, here you I scare am. them away because you don't give a fuck anymore. You're just like, yeah, I suck dick on camera. My butt holes on yeah, Google. And, like, and that's the thing. It's like all of it on display. It's like, yep. It's like, you want to see how many dicks I can fit inside me? <laughs> 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 and he's there like, okay, you're a I'm like, wait, how many pet. can you? What's your record? <laughs> What's your record? My record is seven, I reckon. Because I did that gangbang for King. With seven. seven. One, two... Where's the seventh one? Wait, hang on. <laughs> well, there were three down there. Yeah. One. Oh, no, maybe it was six. Maybe it was six. I mean, six is still impressive. <laughs> I'm sure one <laughs> snuck in there somewhere. <laughs> that was, that scene was really good. That was actually like my, I think that was when, that was, that was 2014 that I did that scene and I remember afterwards I had to get a flight back from LA to the UK and I'd really fucked my neck and I thought I was paralyzed <laughs> and I was like lying in bed and I was like trying to reach for my phone in like a model apartment and everyone else had left it was just me and you know what the model apartments are like oh yes. yeah <laughs> oh yes they are not nice and I'm like trying to reach for my phone but I could only move my hand and I was like I'm paralyzed like I'm fucking paralyzed. I'm not going to be able to get on this. But obviously I wasn't paralyzed. I just quite hurt my neck a little bit. Um, but like, then I think I, I was like, okay, Samantha, it's time to take five and like step back a little bit from what you're doing to your body. I think that was like the start of the end for me because mm -hmm. the scene was amazing. And I like Princess Donna, did you ever work for her? No, but I know she's, yeah, she's incredible. She is like, she's so amazing. And she was, she's just one of the best directors I've ever worked with. And like working for her was a dream. The guys were amazing and Kink are amazing. I mean, I know you love working for them as well. They're just, they're on another level when it comes to their respect for performers. Yeah. Um, and speaking of like consent and just the way they, yeah. Oh my God. I, I don't, I think, yes, I think they're probably, if not the best, one of the best in the industry and just all round amazing. But I think I really pushed myself physically and mentally in the scene to the point where afterwards I was like, what more can I really achieve here? Like I've set this kind of precedent that I am this really extreme performer mm -hmm. and I go to these really extreme levels and look what I'm going to do next and like, look how fucked up my scenes are. And then I was like, I'm going to die on set. <laughs> like if I keep, like yeah. if I keep going this, this way. So I think that was when it was like the beginning of the end and I was kind of like, okay, it's time to take five and really think about what I'm trying to do with my life here. Mm. Um, and that's actually, do you remember then I went to Norway? Yeah. Like I was like, I'm going to take a month and I'm just going to go and travel. Really, well. I've never known you to take time off. So like, yeah. it was like, I was like, wait, she's like having this like, in, like, Surreal experience. <laughs> the existential crisis yeah. was kicking in. Because, <laughs> because I posted like I didn't post anything on my social media for a few days, which obviously uh, you know that never happens. Um, <laughs> so then I randomly just posted this picture in Norway with no, no caption or anywhere anything that where I was. And I remember you messaged me and you were like, "What are you doing? And where the fuck are you?" Like, <laughs> and that's it. Because all my pictures were taken on a timer, so it looked like I was like maybe on this romantic getaway with a dude, but I was yeah. on my own. <laughs> and, I, and was it I think it was you that was like okay who are you with are you with a boyfriend because like have you got a new boyfriend why aren't you telling me about this new boyfriend and I was like yeah. the boyfriend is me I'm here on my own <laughs> um but it was like my kind of realization like you know when people have that self-discovery yeah um and that was I think when I was like I don't really want to do porn anymore and that's with no disrespect to the industry at all because I love what I achieved and I'm ne I would never turn around and be like oh I'm so regret that I did that Ugh. because I don't like you know and, and you can't regret it. even if you feel a twinge that that you maybe regret it a little bit you just can't yeah I mean you have I mean like you and I know I mean we have bad days in you like any yeah. job my favorite was yes. just like, if you call, were calling me, I knew you were having a bad day. Like we never talked yeah. unless we were on set and we needed to bitch to someone that understood. 
But we should talk about being on set and needing to bitch because then we can talk about Harmony Films and like those trips. Um, <laughs> and like those trips, I'm just going to move myself out of the way because it's actually getting dark and I'm scared. <laughs> um, but Harmony, basically, I mean, you know what it's like to work for them. I've yeah. never worked for a company where they make a girl girl scene last three days and then only want to pay you for one day. Um, until this, like, no, this is a true story. Everything this is, is a true <laughs> fucking story. Like, it sounds like I'm making up. I am not. These people are real, okay? Like, these are real life people that that employ performers. Um, the thing is, as well, it's like, like they're they're very sweet, so they kind of like they get away with it in this fucked up way. And then you're like, hold on a second, I've been paid like a budgeted rate to be on set for a week. And I've shot half a scene in that time. <laughs> and like yeah. every day you're up at like five in the morning in the wet makeup chair and then you wait and you wait and you wait. And you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you doing? The, like, so the three day girl girl scene was, I was booked for this girl girl scene with two other girls. And I got to set and one of the girls test hadn't come back. Uh -oh. And he was like, he was like, half the test has come back, but syphilis hasn't. Right. I and feel I like syphilis like, is important. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a piggy. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so we're not shooting the scene. He was like, well, you know, she probably hasn't got syphilis. And I was like, right, but she might have syphilis. Okay. Probably, you know, and, yeah. and, um, and then he was like really pissed that I wouldn't kind of cooperate with his kind of oh no then he was what, what did he he was like well why don't we do it where she only does stuff to you and I was like right well what difference is that going to make yeah. to me getting and then he so now I have to do all uh, the work and I'm still at risk yeah exactly so I was like well no and then I was like well what about the other girl and the other girl hadn't arrived yet mm -hmm. um so and by this time it was like four in the afternoon so I'd been on set for like nearly 12 hours mm -hmm. and um and he was like, okay, well, the other girl's obviously cancelled because her flight hadn't come in yet. So I'm like, right, so I've got no one to perform with because I've got one girl that could potentially have syphilis <laughs> and one girl that's still in France, <laughs> in another country. And, and then he was like, can you call this, this other girl, who I hate, by the way, um, this other performer, I'm not going to say her name because if anyone no, say her name. Actually, actually does like her, but I hate her. And he was like, can you call her and work with her? And I was like, oh, her pussy smells and she's disgusting. <laughs> um, but like, I was like, you know what? I just want to fucking get this done. So I called her and she was available. And like to her testament, she did then get a train basically two hours to set to do the scene. But then this other girl without a test is still there. And this other girl had flown in from Russia. Oh, no. So he was like, she needs to work because she needs to be paid. And I'm like, right, but she's not got a, a test. Yeah. So by this time, it's like, oh, God, it's like 10 p.m. So I've Holy been on set shit. since. I don't even know why you're surprised. This is Harmony we're talking were you about. Were anal that day? Have you eaten or no? I had well okay so let's let's put this into context because when I first started doing anal I didn't eat all day this is towards the end of me retiring from the industry so I fucking out all day I don't give a shit <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm not starving for anyone no I remember anymore. that you used, you used to do that all the time you would starve yourself for anal yeah. but then you'd be on and that's that's stories. the thing like literally be on set for like for like 12 hours and not eat anything I was like I'm not doing that shit anymore I'm not yeah. doing it like I'm eating and if if it goes if it goes bad it goes bad yeah, that's not my problem. Um, <laughs> like, I, say, I always say, like, you're not a true porn star unless you've been shit on. So you're just like giving exactly. all the girls the passage. Yeah, or unless you shit on someone. True. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, that's to be shit. And I was like, that's what baby wipes are for. Okay, like, <laughs> deal with it. So it gets to like, we're still waiting on this girl's test. So then, right, it gets. I'm. I think it's about midnight at this point. And I was like, oh, and I had Fang, so my pug for anyone 
Mm. And we were in this like industrial ex-military bunker outside of London. And it was like, God, it must have been February because it was so cold and they had no heating and they had, oh, that's it. They had no bathrooms. They had one outside toilet. And like, they want us to get ready and like prep for an anal scene. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm not being funny, but like, it's just not happening today. So I was like, I need to get back home. And he was like, well, can you come back tomorrow? And I was like, okay, well, I have another shoot booked in tomorrow. And he's like, well, can't you cancel that shoot? And I was like, listen, right. <laughs> I was like, you have to pay me for today, one, but you haven't done anything. It's like, well, I've been in hair and makeup. I've done all my stills and I've been here since six o'clock this morning. Yeah, so, you booked me for the scene. It's like, you pay me for today. And, I, and he was like, well, but you haven't done the scene. And I was like, so you pay me a kill fee for today and then you rebook me for the scene. Like, that's how it works. I'm not, by this time, I should add, like, obviously I'd been in the industry for years. You know, when you first start, I probably would have just been like, okay, we'll come back tomorrow. You don't have to pay me yeah. today. Yeah. Um, but then as you, as you kind of grow in the industry and people know who you are and you get sick of everyone's bullshit, you can start <laughs> kind of saying, actually, no, I'm worth more than sitting on set for 18 hours for free. Yeah. Um, I could have booked another set that was more professional and gotten paid today. So. Yeah. And then I was like, and then you want me to cancel my shoot tomorrow to come back. Yeah. I like screw someone uh, else over. Exactly. So I ended up managing to reschedule the shoot the next day to come back. Um, and he's like, can you get here really early? Like 530. Oh, mm. it's midnight. <laughs> I'm like, right. So let's play. and then he's like, actually, can you stay over? Because they had a premiere in room where they were putting literally everyone else in the crew and I'm like right do you want me to sleep on the floor of premier and but I couldn't because I had my dog yeah so then I was like well can you pay for me to get a taxi home because there's no trains because we're outside of London he's like oh taxi is going to be really expensive and I'm like mm, probably shouldn't have waited till midnight then should we <laughs> um so in the end I managed to argue a taxi get this taxi home and I got back on set the next day on like no sleep at all and when I got to set, no one was there. No what? one was there. No one was there. No one was there. So I think I waited until like nine for them to arrive because they were like, yeah, we're on From the way. 5.30? We uh -huh. Oh, Jesus. And then, oh, can you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we, we sh so we played the whole thing again of, getting the makeup on and pretending we're going to start the scene any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, you know the game. You've played this game with them. Yeah, you already know, like, when you're on set and you know a scene is just not happening, but no one wants yeah. to call it, you're just like, but, okay. But you know that that whole thing with Harmony where they're like, yeah, yeah, so we're definitely going to start shooting your scene at da 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 o'clock and you're like, right, so five hours after that. And yeah. then that time passes, and then they're like, we're definitely going to start shooting your scene at da 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 o'clock. Yeah. So anyway, again, we go through the whole day. This girl's test hasn't come back still. Um, which is not a good sign. <laughs> which is not a good sign. The girl that was going to step in the night before now can't do today. So it's just me and this other girl. So then he's like, is there anyone you can call that you can do a scene with? And I'm like going through my my phone book texting every single girl I know that's got a clean test and I'm like please someone come and fuck me like <laughs> I was like I will literally give you half of my fee at this point to come and get this shit done um so again we go through the whole rigmarole of waiting around finally this girl's test comes back at like 9 p.m Oh no. 9 p.m. So she's she's fine. She's Oh, cool. There you go. So you got clean. Yeah. But the <laughs> reason that it took so long is because she'd had syphilis the the year before. So the antibodies still show on your test. Okay. So those tests have to go to like a different lab because we had like a big uh syphilis thing yeah. in Europe yeah. a few years ago. Do you remember? Yeah. It was pretty wild. It was wild. <laughs> so anyway, she so then we get to start filming this scene 
and we get down into the place where we're filming and by this time it's like 11 o'clock we sh and I've got Fang with me again we start shooting the scene when we're finished Gary goes he's the director he goes hmm all we can hear the whole scene is your dog snoring like <laughs> on the audio so he's like we have to shoot it again and I was like no we're not fucking shooting it was by the, it was like one o'clock in the morning I was like you've had 48 hours to shoot the scene like are you kidding me it's like you don't think you could hear it they had headphones on like you could have heard him snoring in the first place yeah. so basically they had to dub the entire scene with like this kind of weird erotic dance music <laughs> to, to bury the fact that fang is in the background poor little dog been on set for like a million years just going <laughs> I love that he made an appearance in a, in a movie though that's amazing Thanks, cameo how many sets that dog has been on like oh, yeah. it's so funny um, but yeah there's that one and then there was like the time in Budapest where I shot a DP scene at like four in the morning and then had to get had to get a plane straight away and it was like snowing it was like I feel like that's when you called me and you were like, when you were doing your sing song, you're like, I just want a hard penis. <laughs> I just need hard penis. <laughs> I mean, that could have been any number of scenes, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a six year career song, you know? It's funny. So that's like the song of like, oh my God. Can I say, say, what were you gonna say? No, I just think it's, it's funny because you it, it's just like anytime you shoot for them you know i'm not shooting until the sun goes down but i'm gonna be on set at like seven in the morning <laughs> yeah and and it's always the thing with them is as well is that there's no like i wouldn't mind if they were like at seven and you know we're not gonna start shooting till this evening sorry you're on set so long we'll pay you more and go take a break go take a rest but it's not it's like hang around with your <laughs> thumb up your ass like an idiot all day there'll be no food on set God. <laughs> we won't feed you but sit around no that's it the only thing that's available is like cheese and bread <laughs> cheese and bread like loads of cheese and bread the thing is as well it's like and do you have any people like that in in america i feel like there are i've i've always heard of quite quite people that are usually quite proficient in the states like sets usually run to a certain schedule, mm -hmm. give or take like an mm -hmm. hour or so. Yeah, like sometimes you'll have a bad day and the guy can't get his dick hard or there's a shot that gets Oh, those are my out. favorite. But, <laughs> but usually they're pretty together. Like every, when, whenever I shoot in LA, I'm like, oh, this is just another, another level. Like mm -hmm. you, and then you come. So for um, English performers to go to America, we're like, oh shit. This is porn. When you guys come across here, you must be like, holy shit, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, I want to go home. Like, I feel like the difference is in America, we all, everyone goes to set and no one wants to be there. Like, even the director, the, the, the PAs, everyone's like trying to get the shit done as quick as they can so they can beat the traffic and go home. But I feel like in like the UK and in Europe, it's more of like a lifestyle for the crew. So they'll like be hanging out and then be like, we're going to stop and have lunch for three hours. And you're like, I want to suck a dick and go home. <laughs> it's such, I feel like it's such a European thing. Like we're so like, people are so like, I don't want to say laid back, but especially like, for example, in Barcelona, if you're shooting there, like it's very like, oh, we have to take a siesta. And it's like, yeah. you know, we have to do the work, get it done. I want to go home. Like, I don't yeah. want to be here. I and I think as well. You, and then you have that difference um, when you first start and when you're like a well kind of established performer. So when you first start, you're like this puppy and you're so happy to be on set and you can't believe you've been booked. And oh my God, elegant angel booked me. I'm so happy. And, um, and then like when you're well established, you're like, you get to set and you're like, do my makeup. Let's suck a dick. Let's get paid. Let's yeah. go home. And it's like, there's no fucking about it. It's like, I don't want to be there here. This is my job. I, I'm here to get paid. I'm not here to be nice. Um, like, and I feel, and you see that turn 
in performers as well it's like you kind of watch them go from like these kind of really excited they can't believe this company's booked them and they're really gonna make it and this year they might win an AVN to like where they're like I am so over it I totally <laughs> don't like a thousand C's <laughs> it's like if I see another fucking soft cock I am gonna cry I literally just walked past someone in the street as well. I'm just walking up and down this road. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you do to deal, like, how do you deal with that on set with soft cock? Like, how do you, what would you do? So, I mean, what can you do really? When, when it's just not working, we, so, you know, actually, I can't even remember. It's been so long that since I shot in the States, but in the uk we used to shoot hard and soft versions so the mm -hmm. soft version so you do the same there don't you mm -hmm. yeah for not for not for everyone but for some sets you would yeah, yeah for like for like penthouse and stuff like that because yeah. then they sell the soft versions to like tv and like hotel channels and the soft version is basically yeah so the soft version is basically pointless like yeah. it, it's basically it's just, it's, for those listening yeah for those listening that don't know it's like imagine any tv show scene where you're in like you yeah. can't see anything, but we're humping. Which in but, reality but is... Yeah, so it... Yeah, go on. No, I was going to say, in reality is just basically the girl is fucking over it and the guy is slapping his flaccid dick against her stomach. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally it. And like, and then you're just trying to hide the fact that there's no, no insertion at all. Like, that's like what you're trying to do. Unless you really uh, like the guy, because then you're like, yeah, we could fuck for soft. Like, but if you don't like the guy, we're like... Mm -mm. <laughs> you're like just get it done I'm just gonna like hump you for a little bit yeah. but like and they are usually so most good companies will shoot both at the same time with two cameras so they get yeah. one camera they get the hard angles one camera they, they get the soft whereas in the UK some companies just like to do both separately which basically means you're shooting two scenes so mm -hmm. they always shoot the hard first because they want to get the best energy out of you and then in the soft your your makeup's already like running down your face <laughs> before you've even started and you just, yeah, you're like, do you want to get touched up? And you're just like, no, just get it done with. And you're just like, <laughs> like, I don't care that I look like a haggard crack addict. Like, I don't care. <laughs> Who's going to pay for this? No one. No one. Like, it's going to be free porn no. in a hotel room. I don't give a shit. Like, it's, like, it's like, I literally, do you know how much I care? Not at all. Like, I just want my check. I want to go home. Um, yeah. But so for that, like, basically, I think I've had some scenes where, where it's just not working the whole way through so you just don't get any hard shots at all and then you even have to fake the cum shot so sorry to ruin everyone's vision of how amazing porn is but sometimes the cum is just soap yeah, yeah it's just cetaphil soap. it's yeah. cetaphil <laughs> oh gaviscon and my favorite my my favorite thing in porn everyone would ask like what's your favorite part of your day is my favorite part of a sex scene is when they have to get a guy fake orgasming in the like his facial expressions because I me be like, <laughs> me watching guys fake come and be like Ugh! like it is so fucking oh my god i know actually do you know what i completely forgot about that <laughs> that's so good are you ever um, are you ever tempted to go back to shooting i knew you were at one point know? so do you know what? There's things that I miss about it. Of course, you know, I miss the money. Let's, let's talk about that. I definitely miss the money. Um, and I miss certain, certain aspects of it that probably I wouldn't miss if I went back to it. Do you know, you know, when you look back on things, you always look at them through rose tinted glasses, like things yeah. I say to Tony now. And he's like, yeah, when I met you, you hated that. Like you mm -hmm. hated it. So like, for example, I think like, last year seeing everyone post shots of avn and i was like oh avn and he was like you hate avn more than anything you, hate, you hated avn I hate it. like i hate it it's <laughs> the worst week of the year yeah. ever it's like it's like first my hands like you think your hands are dry from using hand, hand sanitizer during coronavirus <laughs> like try being at avn and being a porn star like yeah. your skin is literally peeling from the amount of hand sanitizer that you're using <laughs> and then like everyone gets avn flu like yes. afterwards, everyone gets sick and you spend the entire week trying to avoid everyone that you hate and yeah. going to these parties that are just full of fucking assholes. And then at the end of the week, you, you have this horrible anxiety climax where you either win or 
or you don't win. And not like it makes any difference anyway, because all of my awards are now in a box in the attic. But like at the time, <laughs> it's like the most important thing. I remember like the year that I took Tony, when Hard in Love, my evil angel feature that I wrote, mm -hmm. had like 25 nominations and only won two. And I was in tears. Like I was like, I deserved best actress. And Tony and like John Stagliano oh, will, they were like, yeah, you did, but you didn't win. So stop crying. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And then they were like, wicked pictures always wins. And like, everyone knows that they buy all the fucking awards. Like, but yeah, again, so it's like, you never, and even if you win, it's like, it's not what I wanted. And like the breakdowns after of all the girls drunk crying, 10 out of 10. Oh. 10 out of 10. Oh my gosh. It's like, I remember like. Because we just oh, want yeah. so much, we want so much validation. And if we don't get it, we're that's, like. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. And it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, what difference does it actually make for your career? You put it in your Twitter bio. Yeah, it doesn't mean any, it doesn't make, does it doesn't do anything. Can I trade it in for real gold? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I tell you, I'm gonna sell all of mine on eBay, and I bet I get like a fiver for them. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Like, <laughs> if that, do you know, like people think they're joke awards anyway. They're like, why have you got an award that says best sex scene? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like, is this a good joke? Well, back yeah. in my past. Well, when you're a grandma, just put them on your mantle and just be like, ah. Oh, no, I'm gonna just be like, oh, back in my day, I knew how to have sex. <laughs> 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 uh, Tony will tell you that's a lie because we haven't had sex in 28 years. <laughs> <laughs> how is it? How is it in the UK? Because like in America, porn. If you do porn, you're very judged. It's getting a little bit better, but it's still pretty bad. Is is the UK more accepting? I don't know. Do you know what? Like, it, I think it depends who you talk to. And I mean, yeah, everyone is. So, for example, I retired from performing. God, it's got to be going on five years now. Mm -hmm. Did you retire uh, right before I did? Yeah, I retired right before you. Just like we started at the same time. We retired. <laughs> we, were, we were in together, out together, baby. And also we shot our first boy girl scene the same month after both of us going, oh, I'll never shoot boy girl. And no, 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 I'll never do <laughs> stick on camera. We both were like, I took dick. I took dick too. So I remember messaging, messaging you and being like, I have to tell you something. And you were like, I have to tell you something. And I was like, you go first. And I was like, and you were like, I did boy girl. Don't hate me. And I was like, I did boy girl. <laughs> and we were like, oh, well, that's okay then. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's, so it's been like five years and I still feel like, so part of me, and it's like this endless inner turmoil. So part of me just wants to be like, I did fucking porn. It was awesome. I was really fucking good at it. I was one of the, probably the first British performers to win AVNs, um, like to get contracted to someone like Evil Angel. I think I'm the only British performer that's had that. Mm -hmm. um, like I did fucking well, like I was, good at it not if that's something to be proud of yeah it definitely is but then like the other part of me is like you know I'm a mother and I have a new career now and then like whereas I'm not ashamed like I feel like people might be judgmental of a past that isn't so like normal mm -hmm. and that's that's all it is it's just not normal people don't expect it mm -hmm. yeah what made you switch to yoga? Like, where did that come from? Well, actually, because I was so stressed out, you know, like with the travel and yeah, like just the, the endless days on set and just exchanging different bodily fluids. And well, that's what I was going to say is I don't think, I think a lot of listeners, if you don't know, you know, overseas porn is you would just like wake up in the morning and just like fly to Budapest or fly yeah. to Prague or fly to a different, you know, so you'd have to like start your day, fly to a different country and then go to set. Fly back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like, there was a lot of travel. There was a lot of, and I felt very lonely as well. Cause I felt kind of like, did like, I felt kind of like, did, did I actually have any friends or was I just, this person that goes to set and everyone's nice to me because I'm making the money and yeah. then I go home and like all my friends, like for example, you and then like Lexi, um, Lexi Lowe, who's also retired as well. You all live so far away. And the things that we 
kind of bonded over were how much we hated our jobs. So I was like, it's actually quite a sad and lonely existence to be a porn star. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I can't remember where I was going with this. It's to yoga. Um, but yeah, so basically then I, my mum was like, I kept, when, it was that time that I came back from LA and I had like the really bad neck and she was like, why don't you do some yoga? Because it's good for stress and tension. So I, I started going and to be honest, I really hated it. And <laughs> Like, funnily enough, I I really hated it. And then she was like, why don't you give it another go? And I went to a studio with my friend and I it was a different teacher and she kind of had a different approach and she kind of opened this whole world to me. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. Like, I don't feel stressed when I'm doing this. I feel like my body feels like on a different level to what it's it's felt like in years. Um I also was like suffering quite badly with like physical manifestations of the stress I was going through. So like I'd go to the doctors and they couldn't find anything wrong with me because technically, physically there wasn't. And that's kind of when also, and like, I I mean, I've been getting quite a lot of hate online for this this week, but where I kind of got in touch with a more like holistic approach to dealing with my health. And I was like, you know, there's no point in me taking all these pills if I'm not dealing with what's actually happening here first. Mm -hmm. Like I've got shit going on that Mm -hmm. needs to be sorted out so I started doing that and it made me feel so much better and then I was also doing things like Ayurveda and just like eating healthily like trying not to eat too much shit which I mean is difficult but like I feel like for example like refined sugars and carbs I tried to cut out quite a lot of those because I feel like when you're traveling especially and you're on set the things that are available are things like bread cookies you know, all the great things for your body, which that when they want you to take all your clothes off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Everything that'll make you blow yeah, up. Like, oh. Yeah, they're like, oh, we want you to feel really sexy. So I have like 20 cupcakes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so then I was kind of like, okay, well, I'm basically doing this job and then paying to do this hobby that's making me feel better. But the job is kind of making me feel dog shit. So um at the time I just met Tony as well like when I kind of had this realization so I came back from Norway and then I oh, then I decided I was going to move to Norway but then I met Tony um and I was like oh I'm just gonna see where this goes with him maybe I'll move to Norway next year and here we are six years later um <laughs> actually today six years to the day since we met oh it is our six-year anniversary one-year anniversary of being engaged and I uh He's at home. I'm walking down the seafront um, on my own, and we are officially in lockdown in the UK, so we're not actually doing anything. Um, <laughs> you know, that, yeah, so then- that, that's how you that's how you wound up with your first child. You know, when you're not doing anything, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know that is exactly how we wound up with our first. Child. I know. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have a nephew. I need a niece. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, do not give her that idea. <laughs> not yet. Okay, I've worked very hard to lose this much weight so that I can fit into a nice wedding dress. After, then my body can go to shit because, like, then I don't fit into anything oh, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah. So then I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically check because you know, I, I, I always said if I decide that I want to leave porn, I want to have something that kind of means it wasn't all for nothing so I bought a house well a house I bought a flat in London and I paid for my well I paid for braces <laughs> and then I paid and then I paid for my yoga teacher training so I was like okay so I fixed my teeth I bought a house and I got a new qualification so now I'm like good I can kind of walk away from it knowing that actually I I got something from it yeah um yeah, and then I started, so I started teaching, but I, I mean, I was very naive. I was like, oh, as a private yoga teacher, you can charge like 70 pounds an hour. So I'm going to be like making even more money than when I was doing porn. I'll do like 10 classes a day. And it's just like, no. Um, I mean, it definitely doesn't work like that. And it took a really long time. Like it took, it's taken five years, obviously, to even build up a client base in London. And then we moved here. Yeah, so now I have yeah. to start again from scratch. So. But yeah, it's it's really it is it's really rewarding in like a different way, obviously, than porn was and and is. But um, yeah, 
So that that's <laughs> the story. I love it. I love it. And then, and you, especially now with motherhood, I mean, is that? It, I mean, I'm going to ask you the question, like, I don't know the answer answer for the listeners, but was motherhood something that, like, you wanted, you planned for? Like, what is it, you know, coming from porn and now being a mother? So I always, actually, no, that's a lie. I didn't always want kids. Um, for the longest time, I really didn't want kids. I was like, I'm just going to be a dog mom forever, and I don't want children, and children are like a drain on your income and your looks, which they are. But I mean, he's so worth it in like every possible way. But then like, I think it, it must have been about six years ago that I was like, actually, I really want to be a mom. And I feel like that is my calling in life. And um, I said when, when I met Tony as well, I was like, look, because he was like, I never want to have kids. I never want to get married. I don't even want a girlfriend again. And I was like, well, that's great. <laughs> Getting this out here. I'm getting married and I'm having kids. And if it's not with you, it's with someone else. So wrap it up now or... And I was like, I'm not asking you to get me pregnant and put a ring on it right now, but I don't want you to close off those possibilities. Like, if you're saying there's that it's never going to happen, then I have to leave because I can't waste time with someone that's life path doesn't align with mine. And he was like, well, I never said never. And I was like, no, you did. Um, <laughs> but when he said that, I was like, okay, there's work to be done here. Um, but, but I mean, at my little boy was definitely not planned. Um, and I mean... <laughs> It actually, like when I think about it, he came at a really good time and obviously he's the best thing that's ever happened in my life. But yeah, when we found out I was pregnant, I burst into tears and I was like, what are we going to do? We live in a one bedroom flat in Hackney. I teach aerial and yoga for a living. Like I can't do this. <laughs> um, but then I think like there's that thing. It's like, you, you know, you can plan your life, like, but it's never going to go exactly to plan. And if it does, that means that when something happens that's unexpected, you're fucked. Like, you don't know how to handle that shit. Yeah. You know, you have those people that they're like, they leave uni and they marry their childhood sweetheart and they have a baby straight afterwards and they move into their little terraced house and that's all well and good. But then something happens to throw them off, off a little bit and they just don't know how to deal with it. Um, but I think, yeah, he definitely came at a good time and I'm I'm so, so, so happy, obviously, that, that he did come. Um, and I do hope there will be another one soon after we get married, so. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're waiting for that wedding. It gives so, us some I know. Yes! I know. We had hoped, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm saying this like you don't know, that May 2021, that we would be getting married, but obviously we haven't even viewed a venue yet. Like, we yeah. don't... Especially now with the world, it's not like you could go around and plan. Well, that's the thing, because like, I was like, well, I want to get married at this point. And Tony's like, well, what's the point in booking anything? Like, we're in and out of lockdown. We thought we'd be out of lockdown by now, but here we are, first day of lockdown too. And it's like the end of the year. So Yeah, yeah it's hard to book anything. Yeah. On this day last year. Oh, wait, I just have, I have a couple rapid fire fan questions because I just I love it so much and then Vic has questions for you yeah, I, then I have my, you're gonna gonna go, my questions we're gonna go over a couple of I am just gonna tell you now because <laughs> I'm like hanging on very little battery so I'm gonna start walking towards someone with a charger but go for it <laughs> <laughs> okay um scene you're most proud of uh Rocco and Hennessy in Perfect Slaves obviously <laughs> yep um we kind of answered how do you balance home and work um what do you think about No Nut November? Is that a thing in the UK? No, but I keep seeing it on... Uh, is that like where people don't... Uh, are you like yeah. celibate for November? Stupid. We're on lockdown. <laughs> Why would you do that? What's the point in it? Dumb. Yeah, exactly. Go away. Yeah. Um, favorite yoga pose? Oh, always wheel because I'm really good at back bends. But weirdly, actually, this month has been split. Mm -hmm. um, favorite award one? For the for the Rocco scene, a hundred percent always. Um, but I still stand by. I should have got Best Actress for Hard in Love. So I'm going to say, like, if I'd won that, that would be my favorite award. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best time for yoga? Oh, morning, a hundred percent morning because it wakes you up. But then also just before bed, if you do like something kind of slow that gets you ready for 
for sleep and you really, really focus on your breathing, because if you have anxiety like me, doing it just before bed can work out all of that anxiousness and actually help you sleep, which is obviously great. Makes sense. And, uh, okay, two more. What is your boobs size? (laughs) What is my boobs size? I actually don't know anymore. It used to be... (laughs) <laughs> um and like I, d- I actually don't know if this is the same in the states but so in the uk it used to be a 32 uh double d but now it's all over the place because one's bigger than the other because i'm still breastfeeding two years on so who even knows anymore they're like right down by my ankles anymore they're not pretty <laughs> <laughs> and i mean i have a ton of fan questions but i know we're running out of time so my fa- last one is favorite harry potter movie oh god that's too nice difficult book. Oh, it's got, do you know what? And like, this is, oh, fuck, Goblet of Fire, I think. I think, (laughs) I think Goblet of Fire, maybe. I'm going to go with Goblet of Fire because I remember that was the first, my mum read me the first three and Goblet of Fire was the first one I read on my own. And I remember just being like, like it it was like, it hit differently. (laughs) It's the first one that... It's the first one that doesn't have like the same format. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think Goblet. I love it. All right, do your question. You ready? Before her phone dies. <laughs> What's the most annoying question people ask you? Oh God, there's too many. Wait, oh. um, when will you do porn again? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. That's a really annoying one. Oh no, actually, no, do you know what? I'm going to change it to why did you retire? Yeah, because oh, I wanted have to. You retired. Have you retired? No, I just I took a five year break. <laughs> That's what you do in porn with a with an, a career with a shelf life of five years. I took a five year break. <laughs> What's your favorite way to eat a potato? That's really difficult. Um, I'm gonna say I like a jacket potato. Do you guys call it that in in the states? Is that like a baked potato? Like a baked potato yeah. with. And I like it with baked beans. Do you have those there? It's such an English yeah. thing to eat. That's an, that's an English yeah. thing, but yeah. I like, um, I like jacket potatoes. It sounds so much better. Something. Like he's wearing a little coat. <laughs> yeah, but I actually saw someone post on Instagram and they were like, no, it was on Depop. And they were like, um, it was, do you want to buy this jacket potato? And it was a potato wearing a coat. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would the title of your autobiography be? Porn and pugs. Oh! <laughs> oh, Thing, my little buddy Thing. Uh, what is the biggest turning point in your life so far? It's got to be motherhood. It's got to yeah. be because it just, you know, I could say, I feel like life come. It's broken up into little lives. So school is a little life, and yeah. then university is a little life, and then porn would be a little life. But motherhood is just like it's it puts all of those little lives and it's just like pushes them out of the way. And I feel like, you know, there's been a lot of turning points in my life, but motherhood was one I wasn't prepared to hit the way that it did. And it just changes everything, like everything, your entire perspective on life, everything that matters. It's just that. So that's got to be the biggest. Yeah, it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. What are you most proud of? Uh, probably my son and that sounds really like corny but that's definitely the thing that I'm most oh about. he's the best so he's, he's the best <laughs> what takes up too much of your time my child <laughs> <laughs> and social media <laughs> like, I like the social media yeah. <laughs> social media my son and social I mean my son is obviously it's welcome time Social media is definitely a drain on my time. So like, for example, I'm just, I've just deleted Instagram today because I can't deal with how stupid people are. And like, occasionally I have to just delete it for like, Oh, like the app, not your, okay. No, not my page. Like I just delete it. Uh, Sometimes I delete the app for a few days to just call up because like my blood was boiling at people and how stupid they are. So I'm crossing the main road. I had to, uh, (laughs) I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea rather than sitting in my house, but I needed to get some fresh air. So. <laughs> no, I'm into it. Like I'm it. getting like a really pretty view of the sunset. So I like it. <laughs> what is yeah. what is your favorite smell? Oh, I I'm mean, just gonna sound like a broken record, but my little boy's hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I also 
really love that, you know, like that kind of bonfire oh I can smell it now like kind of bonfiery wintry smell when you know yes. it's coming close to like November yeah. it's kind of like that that cold smell where people are burning log fires yeah that's oh, really that cool you- yeah I can smell it right now and it's like that especially here since we moved out of London you smell it a lot more because the air is cleaner mm-hmm. so you can smell when people are burning like that log fire and it's got that kind of we're almost uh like to Christmas and yes like all of that that's i love that smell what what gets you fired up as in in an angry way or in a good way whichever you choose in an angry way social media and people (laughs) stoop as stupid fucking people um and in a good way like working towards something so if i know i need to achieve something like i'm very competitive so like i did my extended yoga teacher training during lockdown and I was like there's no way I'm going to get it done in between balancing teaching online and having my son full time but I was like do you know what I'm going to do it and I I wrapped up in four weeks and apparently even if you do it full time that's really really fast so wow congrats that's awesome yeah so I was like I'm very competitive so anything where it involves me having to kind of win or achieve something gets me really fired up I can I can uh I can vouch for that. (laughs) (laughs) What what do you wish you knew more about? I wish I knew more about, like, as much as I hate it, more about, like, politics and medical science so I can truly argue the things that I believe in. That's a good thing. (laughs) Yeah, like, because I want to be, like, I have so many things that I'm passionate about but then like people come at me with counter arguments and half the time I'm like I know what you're saying it's bullshit but I need the facts to back it up yeah right yeah that makes sense final question what's the one question you would want everyone you meet to answer oh my god that's so difficult <laughs> that's so difficult yeah so every so you got when you get one question that they have to answer what would you want to know Oh my God, that's the hardest question ever. (laughs) Actually, Anna, what would I, I would, I think like if we're being like talking about my life, if it's new people that I'm meeting, I'd always want to kind of know how they felt about porn before I decided Mm -hmm. to be their friend. Because you know when like, I don't want to be making friends with someone and love them and then they find out that I did porn and everything, like that that friendship disappears and that has happened before where you just kind of and then you're like well that really sucked because you were cool and I thought we were going to be friends for ages and and I wish people kind of could see past that career because at the end of the day sex is something that we all do like I'm just I just and I'm going to quote you here I just documented my sexual journey (laughs) um so you know why am I evil for doing that Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 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 All right, that's it. So yeah, shameless thanks. plug. What are you, what are you plugging? Oh, I'm just going to plug that I teach yoga online and it's free so you can sign up via my Instagram. Um but yeah, I haven't really got much else to And you're plug. It, you're uh, stretch with Samantha, right? On Instagram? Oh uh, no, I'm just going to use the Samantha J Beegs one. Okay. okay. You don't, um, you don't want a bunch of people going show bobs show, show bobs <laughs> um but yeah if you do comment stuff like that we'll just block you oh yeah she will she, oh yeah, yeah that's, that's, one of my favorite things you ever said to me is like i love just sitting in the tub with a oh glass of wine <laughs> trolling your instagram comments because yeah. i can't even do my own anymore but like sometimes i just go on your instagram <laughs> oh they're special <laughs> Now you've got too many followers, like it's too intense now. But like before, <laughs> when it when it was only like a couple of hundred thousand, it was the most fun. But now now I go in there and I'm like, oh, I have a headache. Like, <laughs> and sometimes I go and seek them out. Like I'll read through your comments to see if there's any that like I really want to troll. Yeah. Um, but I, I do get lost in a sea of like, please follow. Yeah. <laughs> Looking. Looking oh, for a husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, my favorite are the ones that, that, that I re- did read one the other day actually on your page that was like someone, you posted like a kind of like a nice quote and somebody was like, you're like a 30 something porn star that posts TikTok uh, 
TikTok videos daily, you you can hardly give like philosophy advice. And I was thinking, yeah, but you follow her and probably <laughs> yeah. like spend your time masturbating over her. Yeah, you're leaving this comment. Like, you, you, you're better. And yeah. you took the time to write that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, oh, mm, who's the twat in this situation? Yeah. <laughs> and I like, I almost replied, and Tony was like, let's have a day off from this, right? Let's just. <laughs> Step away from the phone for a second. And that's why I love Tony. Yeah. <laughs> he is definitely my better half and like my like my balance on the scales. Like he ha- makes sure I don't do too much stupid shit. Although when he's not around, I do do stupid shit. <laughs> Can't be there all the time. <laughs> Can't be there all the time to police me and my social media use. Oh, God, I, love it. I guess the only thing I have to plug is, I mean, just go to dannysthings.com. It's got everything there. And uh, follow me on TikTok or follow me on Instagram for inspirational quotes that I don't know anything about. <laughs> it's an inspirational quote because she's really shouldn't be given philosophy. <laughs> yeah, should not. Yeah. But you should definitely... Follow her because she's way more interesting than me. Uh, <laughs> and and if you want philosophy, just read my book, Wait for the Corn, and you can have fun with that. Oh yeah, that's pretty good as well. I've read that. <laughs> I'm so good to see you. Thank you for coming on. And I like hopefully you. see you in real life soon. Exactly. Yeah, if we could, uh, believe exactly. me, you you guys are the first place we're going the moment we can go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Give Tony my love. And then maybe we'll have. Maybe we'll have a wedding soon. Who knows? Yes. That, would, that would be nice too. <laughs> All right. I love you. See you soon. Love you. Bye. Bye. Guys. Bye.